Hello, everybody. Is everybody enjoying WordCamp? <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, well, welcome to Over the Shoulder Email Marketing. We've got David and we've got Tim, and uh, they're going to do their introductions today. So uh, here they are. Thank you. Are these mics turned on? Can you guys hear me? We're live. Yes. Oh, we are live. All right, do I need to do this or can I talk normal? normal. People in the back can. I need to talk up? Yes, please. Okay, speak a little louder. All right. <laughs> I tend to talk kind of quiet, people tell me. So I will try to remember. If I start talking a little low, then give me the sign to, hey, I can't hear you. Um, well, first I want to say welcome to our talk, Over the Shoulder Email Marketing. And this was kind of, obviously we're passionate about email marketing, and it's uh, something that we want to discuss today. But I kind of felt like, you know, we've done it in our company for a few years really successfully, and I kind of had the concept of, you know, you guys or anybody just kind of peeking over our shoulders, seeing what we do, our email marketing strategies, what's worked for us, what's not worked for us, and what we do and stuff, and that's kind of where we'll, we'll go with it, and we'll dive in more as well. So uh, Tim and I are up here, and we're going to give the talk, and we're in a little bit of a unique situation. Last year, Tim and I gave a talk. It was on coopetition. We're technically competitors who have since then become business partners since that talk. And um, most of the time, people get up here, they introduce themselves. We're going to do it a little bit different today. I'm going to tell you about Tim, and he'll tell you about me. <laughs> and uh, that way, we're just going to do it that way. I've worked now with Tim for about three years. He has a company. Um, you know, he started his WordPress journey in 2011. He founded Tim Shrive for Online Solutions as client services. Um, he came into the Divi community, Divi Life, in 2016, and that's where we met. And he and I have been collaborating and working together in that community for quite a few years now, since 2016. We started Divi Chat, which is a weekly podcast, and then Tim and I started WP the Podcast. So. Just curious, does anybody in here listen to WP the Podcast or Divi Chat? Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. If you're not listening to it, you should be. <laughs> Check us out, iTunes. Yeah. Well, and then this past year, we launched WPGears.com, which is a online learning platform where we actually started sharing some of our experiences with productizing and client services and stuff. So. He's an awesome guy. Tim is obviously a lot younger and better looking than me. Um, but we just kind of hit it off. You know, the wonderful thing about WordPress is it's just an awesome community. And, you know, it's been awesome to work with him and stuff. So, Tim, now you can brag on me. Yeah, absolutely. So my good friend David here is... He is older, but he's also a lot wiser. And so I've been able to learn a lot of uh, awesome things from him, uh, the way that he does business. Uh, if you know David, you know that he is uh, the king of networking uh, because he makes friends with everybody. And so um, if you haven't met him yet, you probably will by the end of today. Um, and so, yeah, David started in WordPress uh, in 2013, uh, started Davcom Digital, uh, which is a, uh, at the time, was his client service business. And then shortly after, he, uh, in 2015, got into the Divi community, and that's where we met, as David mentioned. David partnered with uh, our good friend, Corey Jenkins, over here. Uh, so shout out to Corey, who's one of the organizers here. Um, really quick. Uh, I just want to say shout out to the organizers and all the volunteers at WordCamp Phoenix because this is by far the best organized WordCamp I've ever been to. Um, so yeah, applause. So good job, Corey. Yeah. Um, all right, so back to David here. So yeah, so David, not only does Aspen Grove Studios do client service business in WordPress, uh, they also have Divi Space where they do uh, Divi products uh, for the Divi theme framework. And then again, WP the podcast and uh, potent plugins. Uh, I've learned a lot from David, not just about uh, marketing, but his business skills as well. They've acquired two companies, uh, so potent plugins being one of them. Uh, so yeah, it's been a really cool journey uh, where we've been able to collaborate and learn from each other. I uh, learned a lot from him. Hopefully he's learned some stuff from me, maybe Absolutely. a little bit. And so yeah, so that's our story. Um, and now we're gonna talk a little bit more about email marketing. And I kind of want to run through what we're going to go over today. And we're going to talk about why 
you want to still consider doing email marketing even in 2019 um, and why we feel like it's super important even in 2019 to really be a focus if not the main focus of your efforts. Um, we're going to talk about user acquisition, list building, how important it is, some tips and tricks you, that we've done that have been very successful for us and that you maybe can translate over into your business to build an audience and stuff because that's really important. Um, I'm going to tell you about my story, Tim's going to tell you about his. We're going to talk about value versus sales because there's a, a, a really good balance that you know, we found over the years where you want to focus and stuff. And uh, we're going to obviously talk about platforms and tools and then Q&A. If you guys have any questions or, you know, you know or about email marketing, period, feel free to ask them. Before we dive off into the next slide, how many people in here are actually doing email marketing. Good, awesome. awesome. I guess the rest of the people want to do email marketing, so <laughs> that's awesome. There we right. go. Uh, so before we go any further, I want to talk about what our goal is today. Um, this is not everything you will ever need to know about email marketing. Uh, that's impossible to do in 40 minutes. Uh, it's not even really an intro. It's more, as David mentioned, uh, learning what we've done and, and we're just sharing uh, what's been helpful for us and, and kind of um, the, the strategies that we've used in our businesses. Uh, so that's kind of the concept behind over the shoulder email marketing. You're kind of looking over our shoulders of what, what we've been able to do. Um, and another thing we want to accomplish today is prove to you that email marketing is not dead in 2019. People keep saying that. I remember when social media started to become mainstream. Everyone's like, oh, it's uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter. They're going to be the email killer. Email marketing is going to be dead. That didn't happen. And then now people are saying chat bots and messenger marketing, like that's the new thing. Email, email will be a thing of the past. And that's still not true. And so those are some of the things that we wanted to, to cover today. This is a quote from Neil Patel. If you're not familiar with Neil Patel, he's a, a very good online marketer. He's got a great podcast that you can find, Marketing School. Uh, it's kind of the model that Tim and I took WP the podcast from. You know, it's a daily podcast, very short, quick, you know, user-friendly things that you can take right into your business. That was kind of the concept. I'd like to say we came up with it ourselves, but, you know, they say that, uh, what is it, flattery is, you know, doing something someone else is doing is the best form of flattery. And we got it from him. So he's got a quote here. If you think email is dead, you're missing out on the real metrics. The truth, email marketing is still going strong today and is possibly the best possible strategy for your business. And if I were going to change anything on this quote, I would take out the word possible and just say the best strategy for your business. I jokingly tell people all the time when we send out emails, um, if I could send out an email every hour without everybody running for the doors, you know, and unsubscribing from my list, I would send an email out every hour. It's that powerful. It impacts our company, our sales, our revenue greatly. Um, so, like I said, I would take the word possible out of that. <laughs> yeah. So, again, why email marketing? Uh, first of all, it's a direct line of communication to your audience. And so if you compare it to Facebook or uh, Instagram, you're, you're trying to game the algorithm. You're trying to compete with all the other things on uh, social media, uh, your, your followers, friends, cat videos, and all the other viral videos that happen. And so there's, uh, there's no guarantee that you, when you post something on social media that your follow followers are going to see it. Only a small percentage are going to see it unless you pay for more to see it. Um, and then additionally, you own the list. It's not dependent on any platform. Facebook could ban you if they wanted to. They could change things, which they often do. Uh, but with email marketing, once you have that list, you own it, and you can take it and pivot and do anything you want. Go I'm going to say something that was not in our presentation because it's very ap applicable for today. Right before I came in here, I was checking my email. And Tim brings up a very good point, one of the chat bot creators. I can't remember which one of them. I'm on their email list. By the way, if you're not on all the marketers' email lists, get on them. Watch what they're doing, the successful email marketers, and then 
replicate. You know, it's not rocket science. Just kind of do what they're doing and stuff. But I got the email that said, you know, s the subject line was something like, I've been banned. And this person... Larry Kim. Yeah. Mo mobile monkey. Yeah, yeah. Has been banned from Facebook. So, but because I was on his email list, I've still got his email and he still can get in touch with me and stuff. So Tim brings up a, a very, very valid point in that the great thing about email marketing is you own that list. It's not someone else's. So even if you completely change your business model and pivot to something else, which we've done in our businesses, started out as product creators of plugins, themes, and transitioned to learning, teaching people, you know, um, how to run a business, how to build a WordPress business, not how to build plugins and themes something totally different and took that same audience and transitioned, you know, because we had that user base and that email list, it was very successful right out of the gate. So um, it's very, very powerful. Sorry, Tim, I didn't mean that. No. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing here is it's, uh, it's very low cost, where if you put all your eggs in one basket, uh, Facebook ads or, or Google ads, for example, uh, you continuously have to spend a large amount of money to continuously get those same leads. Where email, it's, it, there's going to be some cost to, to gain subscribers and all of that, but once you have that, uh, the, the cost to actually continuously email them out is, is very low comparative, uh, compared to paid advertising. And by the way, I do want to say this. I see pictures, people taking pictures of the slides and stuff. These will be downloadable. You can download these on WordCamp Phoenix's website, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, once the camp is over, or maybe even today, I don't know when they'll be ready. Um, but you can also download them on our website, wpgears.com, for free. We'll just got to sign up with your email to get them. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to practice what we preach, right? <laughs> um, and then the, the last thing I wanted to touch on, on on why email marketing is the automation and segmenting that you can do. Now, again, I've been bringing up Facebook ads, and you can do segments uh, with Facebook and, and only target the people you want to target. Uh, but with email marketing, you can do automated sequences, and you can do uh, sequences based off of, of how people interacted with your content, whether they opened an email or clicked or didn't click, or whether they purchased a certain product. And so there's a lot that you can do that isn't possible with any other platform. Yeah, and I would love to just dive off into that alone. There's so much that can be done there uh, that's really kind of mind-blowing, where you can you know, take your, your users down you know, a, a trail, and depending on what they want and what they don't like, you can kind of drive them. It's, it's, it's really, really powerful, the, the segmentation and stuff. So let's talk about user acquisition and uh, list building. And one of the most important things with this is, you know, obviously you need to have something that people are gonna want to sign up for. You know, it seems like a no-brainer, but that's just what you're going to need to do. You need to, you need to have something to get them to come and sign up. So your visitors need to be enticed to join your list. Um, what are some of those things that you can use? Obviously freebies. In the beginning, um, before I even knew the power of email marketing, I've always known that you know, capturing the user was really, really important. So I've done that since day one when our company started. Um, I didn't, you know, oh, wait, I need to start collecting user data so that I could market to them. I just intuitively knew, because that's how my brain works, to start gathering users. And the way I did that was letting them sign up, you know, use their email, and I would give them free downloads. So like I said, we're in the product, we build plugins, themes, and, you know, we put out probably 10 times the amount of free stuff, if not more, then we do the paid stuff. And you know, I hear people are scared to do that. A lot of times they're scared to give away free stuff. You know, they don't realize how valuable that email is from that user because it's gonna pay a lot more down the road if, they're, if they trust you and um, you're giving them value to whatever their needs are. And then you're gonna be able to market to them later on down the line. So some of the things that you can do is I don't know what your companies are or what it is, but I guarantee you there's something out there that is valuable that you can give away for free, a resource, you know, to, to collect emails. You can use coupons, you know. It's a great way, hey, 
Sign up for our email list, get 10% off of whatever it is that you're selling today. Uh, content upgrades are huge, it's awesome. So we do a lot of um, content marketing. We, we write a lot of blog posts, which in and of itself takes a lot of time. If you're paying someone else to do it, it costs a lot of money, but the value of it is insanely beneficial. Not only on the search engine side, because you know the search engines are establishing you as an authority, but you also have the opportunity to do content upgrades. So Tim, I want you to tell uh, your example of content upgrade, what you do and stuff, because he does a really good job. Of yeah, we'll, we'll share more in detail, but essentially content upgrades is you're, you're teaching something for free in a blog post, and then the content upgrade takes it a step further. So maybe you have a blog post that, that teaches you how to do custom CSS, and then you could have a content upgrade that gives you an ebook that takes it 10 steps further and you know, talks about all the different ways that you can use CSS and, and all of that. And so I'll share some of my specific examples. Okay. All, right. Um, all right, that's right, I get it. That's a couple of slides down. Get a little ahead of ourselves. Thank you, Tim. Because uh, he does, he has some really cool ways in his email marketing story where he'll, he'll share with you and I just think it's genius and stuff. Um, updates, new content, you know, obviously, you know, sign up for our new newsletters, be the first to know. Um, those aren't as good as some of the other options. Um, email series, eBooks, so anything like that, just think of things to grab user acquisitions to get their email and stuff. Yeah, and it's interesting because we'll talk to people that they'll say like, yeah, I've never had luck with email marketing and you know, no one really signs up for my list. But then you look at their website and they just have something at the bottom of their website that says like subscribe. And it's not enticing the user, you're not giving them any reason, like why would they want to give up their information so that you can send them emails when you haven't told them what they're going to get in return. Um, so that's why these things are, are, are so important. Uh, your guests in, in your subscribers inbox. Now this is a, a concept I, I, I took from uh, Neil Patel. Uh, I want to give credit where credit's due, but it's, it makes a lot of sense when you think of it that way. Um, in, in terms of, of email marketing as a whole, where you're being essentially invited to the subscriber's inbox. They're giving you permission to send them emails, and so you have to act responsibly. If you go over to someone else's house as a guest for dinner, you're not gonna be obnoxious and throw their things on the floor and, and stuff like that, and so you kinda have to think of email marketing as a similar thing. You have to respect their home, their inbox, and uh, you know, not spam them, not send them emails every hour as much as we wish we could. Unless it's Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and then they're expecting Lots of spam emails. Yeah, the house rules are out the window on Black Friday. <laughs> you must deliver on expectation. So, um, you know, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you're gonna give them, don't, don't give a, you know, just throw something out there just to grab somebody's email and stuff because it's just not gonna work in the long term. They're gonna unsubscribe from your list. Give value to them. If you say you're going to give them something valuable, give it to them. Don't give them something that's just not going to be a value to them. They're not going to hang around. And then you, your list must be nurtured. You know, I know a lot of people that will start collecting emails and never email them, you know. Uh, and that's just kind of mind-blowing to me that you would collect emails and then never send them an email. So you really need to be proactive. And the truth is, is that it's a lot of work you know, maintaining, nurturing these email lists and stuff. It's a lot of work, but it, but it will pay off for you long term and stuff. So it's really important to nurture them. Yeah, and one thing that uh, we want to point out, we, we're obviously, this talk is all about email marketing, so that's the focus. Um, but really, email marketing, you can't have exclusively alone. It has to be part of the full circle marketing synergy. I realize that's a lot of buzzword synergy. Um, but email, having an email list and doing email marketing um, needs to work together with, David talked about content marketing, um, and then the same thing with you know, paid advertising, uh, running paid ads towards a freebie to build your email list. So it's, it's one piece of the puzzle, um, but you can't have just email marketing. However, I've seen companies talk to people that they'll have the other things, they'll have uh, the social media presence, they'll have uh, they'll do paid ads, but they won't have an email list. And so it, it's like they're missing a, a really big, crucial piece of the puzzle. Big, crucial piece of the puzzle. Um, so I guess here's my story. Is that? Yeah. So we've actually got 
um, yeah, probably right about there, around 30,000 email subscribers today. Um, and you know what? <laughs> Here's the simple truth. When you have 30,000 people that are willing to listen to you, you don't have to have 30,000 people buy your products. Even if you get 10%, you're doing great. Even if you get 1% of that, the value is massive. But if you have you know, a good you know, email marketing plan and strategy and stuff, it can really just you know, blast your business into the stratosphere. So like I said, you know, three and a half years ago, we started Aspen Grove Studios, and that's really where my email marketing journey started. Uh, we created some products for the Divi theme and um, we wanted to give them away, you know. Actually, Divi Elegant Themes put out these amazing designs. They came out and uh, changed, you know, took Divi to 2.4 and they came out with some incredible designs of website examples and stuff, layouts and stuff that they could do. And we had a pretty popular Facebook group that was focused on that. And we kept getting a lot of questions over and over and over again. How did you do this? How did they do that? How did they achieve this? So they had like the MacBook Pro, you know, as you scroll down the page and then the page inside the MacBook Pro was scrolling. And we've got like a thousand people that were like, hey, how do I do that? Um, and I just saw an opportunity. Did it take a lot of work? Absolutely, it took a lot of work. I had to go reverse engineer, figure out how they built them. I built them, took the time, which time is money. I didn't build them. Our team built them. I'd like to say I built them, but I didn't. Um, and, and then we gave them away for free. You know, We built a platform called the Demo Zone, which was on a multi-site platform. And we put these 15 free layouts that Elegant Themes had, wrote a cu couple of custom plugins that allowed many users to go into the same page at the same time. We locked it down to where they could not uh, change anything so that it wouldn't screw it up for the rest of everybody. And they could go into the back end of the website and they could see exactly how those pages and, and posts and everything was built on the back end instead of using inspect element and stuff. And, um, and all we did was require an email. You know, sign up with your email and you'll get access to the demo zone for free. And I will tell you that the majority of that email list came from that idea, which was to teach people. And truthfully, I was, you know, we answered these questions constantly anyways. And it was like, oh, well, you know, we've got a pain point. Let's solve it. And oh, by the way, while we're solving this pain point, man, they're really interested in these products. This might be something one day. Maybe I'll just start catching their email and, and put it into an email list and stuff. So we started doing that by giving away the free products, the demo zone. Um, in other words, also, David's saying that they grew an email list by accident. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, which is okay. You know, I, I'm not the expert, know it all. This is just all of my experiences. I'm sharing with you what I've learned over the last few years and really realizing how powerful email marketing is and things you can do to grab. So once I realized that, oh crap, these emails are really valuable, they're important, people are buying our stuff if we send out an email every now and then, you know, we need to get more emails. Well, what can we do? You know, so we came up with another idea, which was a child theme generator. You know, which is nothing more than a form that fills out the fields for, you know, if you use any of the WordPress themes and you want to modify the core files, if you do any modifications, you want to use a child theme so that when that theme's updated, it doesn't get, you know, trashed, you know. And so we just created the form and it's the easiest thing in the world to create a child theme. It's a text document with the same things so we said, well, let's just, let's just create, let's do it for them. You know, people are, I hate to say this, but people are lazy. And it's not only that they're lazy, they, if they have an option to fill out a field and hit a submit button and they get the child theme emailed to them, they're happy. So that's all we did. We filled out some forms, it created the child theme, and oh, by the way, we need your email and we're going to email that child theme to you, you know. 
And now, a lot, a lot of our audience, you've got to know your audience too, they were a do-it-yourselfer community. So they weren't developers and stuff. So this kind of stuff was very appealing to them. They wanted to learn and stuff. So these are just some of the examples that, that, um, that we used that were really, really, really successful. We give away an immense amount of free things. Um, you know, I even tell my clients, my business clients, that we build websites for and stuff, you know, what do I need to do to be successful online? You know, well, you need to, you need to blog, that's for sure, because Google needs to know that you're an authority in whatever your niche is, and you need to give away a lot of free stuff. You know, the plumber, you know, what do I, what, what can I teach them how to fix their leaky faucet? You know, wow, well, then they won't call me. You know, well, it doesn't matter if they call you or not. They're going to find somebody else on YouTube that is going to do it for them. But if you give them that content for free and you email it to them and you're helping them and you're being of value when that project comes up where they don't have an answer for it and they can't do it themselves, you're going to be the first person in their mind. So, um, yeah, I mean, email marketing is huge. So um, we send out an average of, of two emails per week now. We've gone as high as seven. I've tested the gamut six ways to Sunday. Um, I've always been very um, protective. I have not, we don't send out a whole lot of sales emails unless it's Black Friday and Cyber Monday and that's an exception. And I do get emails from our customers on our email list are like, dude, I got it the first day. I don't need to see it every day after that. 72 hours, 48 hours, 24 hours. Well, you know, I just apologize and say it'll be over soon. Yeah, and, what they uh, don't realize is every email results in a massive increase in revenue. So it's, it's yeah. like, yeah, you might get annoyed, but there's a reason we do it. If We wouldn't do it if it didn't work. Yeah, if it didn't work, absolutely. Um, you know, so the results that it's brought for us has been, um, like Tim said, you know, the, 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 the revenue for our company has skyrocketed because of the email marketing. And here's something that I want to make really, really clear. Even though the Black Friday, Cyber Monday emails work great, we shut it down after that and we go back to giving them value, which for us is things like child theme generators, things like free layouts, uh, free themes, free plugins, free resources that they can use in their WordPress business or use on their own site. We have some of the most amazing um, icon packs for free that you could charge a lot of money for these things. I mean, we've got a design team that I just, I'm super proud of, they're super awesome. And um, yeah, go check them out, you know, aspengrowstudios.com and they're free. You know, there's, so you got to give a lot of value, give a lot of value so that you're trusted, so that when you do have things that you're selling, products, they're going to come and they're going to buy from you because they trust you and stuff. So um, I'm almost scared to say this ever publicly, uh, but our company has five-star reviews on Facebook and other places, and we don't control that. And there's hundreds of them you know, because of the value that we provide them. Uh, we can't edit those, we can't delete those. Those are, those are reviews that customers have come and it's, it's because of the free stuff and all the value that we bring to them and stuff, so. Yeah, so I'll share a little bit about my email marketing story. So um, I, I started, I was basically a year behind David and so we, we operate in the same community selling uh, products for Divi users that extend the functionality of Divi and so um, I created products and realized, okay, I need to start growing my audience and so I started doing tutorials uh, and every single tutorial I wanted to, to teach something and I wanted to give something and so the, the goal of giving something was of course to, to grow an email list and so uh, essentially, um, I mentioned a little bit before about content upgrades. And so one example was um, I had a, a blog post where I, I, I taught people how to create a, a promo bar using the Divi theme. And so I had all the code, here's how you do it, here's how you customize it. And then I said, but if you're lazy and you don't wanna do all that, 
you can just fill out this form here, put you know, what you want the text to be, you know, Black Friday sale starts today, uh, put in what link you want the button to be, put in your color here, and then put in your email and I'll send you the code and then you just pop that in your website. And so um, you know, uh, content upgrades like that and other freebies, I was able to grow the list uh, from zero to 17,000 in about two and a half years. Um, and sometimes it's, it can be a little bit of uh, rotation where people, they only want the free stuff. They don't care about the paid stuff. So as soon as you start sending them emails and, and promoting your, your paid stuff, they unsubscribe. But that's okay. You're going to have people that are going to download the freebies and then never buy anything. And that's just kind of the, the way internet marketing works. So we're running out of time, so I'm going to go rather quickly here. Um, but yeah, so promo bar generator, content upgrades, uh, things like that. That's how I was able to grow my email list. Um, I don't do as much content as, as David and his team do. Um, so I send out uh, less emails, about three per month, uh, content, new products, sales promotions, stuff like that. So I wanted to mention one thing in terms of what the results has brought, because I have a, a very recent example of, of the power of email marketing. And uh, just this week, Valentine's Day, last year I did a big Valentine's Day sale, kind of threw it together last minute, and it ended up being one of the biggest sales I had all year. And so I thought, this year I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start it early and, and all of that. Um, but essentially, once I started sending out those email blasts, my sales quadrupled from the day before. And so I wasn't promoting on Facebook. I wasn't running ads. It was all from my email list uh, that generated that. And so it's really cool to see like that direct example wasn't promoted on the blog. It was purely through the email list and what that can do. Um, so. We're running out of time, so we're going to go through this rather quickly here. But um, David talked about all the value and all the freebies. And so you can't just send out sales emails every day, come buy my stuff. People don't want that. Uh, you have to provide value. And so we wanted to talk about some of the things here. Uh, go ahead and put the whole thing on there, Tim. Flip, put the whole slide, and they can read it, and we'll talk about it, and we'll run through it quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. The value part is, is well, not that far, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> They're all an individual click trigger. I'm going to go ahead and just say a couple of things because uh, on the value side of things, we probably do 80% value, 20% sales. I don't know that. It might be 90-10. You know, it might be that high, 90-10 of, um, you know, value to sales emails ratio. Um, and I'll tell you, when we'd send the full-on sales emails, oh my God, they're awesome. I wish I, I wish I could send full-on sales emails, but maybe I should be. I don't know. I'm sitting up here telling you guys this, and I think I want to try it just to see what happens, but I just don't think it's going to have the impact that it normally does and stuff. Um, you know, your value emails, so your, your content, your tips, tricks, freebies, that kind of stuff, uh, keep users engaged, motivate to stay subscribed, which is really, really important. We just did a massive clean of our email list. Our email list actually was about 40,000. And, you know, um, the people that complain about, you know, your emails and stuff, they don't realize that you're paying to have them on that list. So, um, you know, I don't mind taking them off. And we just called about 10,000 people off of our email list that just weren't interested in receiving our stuff anymore. And, I'm not tied to the size of my email list. That doesn't matter to me. I care about, you know, are they my user? Are they my customer? Am I a potential customer? Are they going to purchase my products and stuff? So, Tim, do we need to cover anything else? Because I yeah, want one you thing, guys to ask questions. Yeah, one thing I want to add is, is the value emails, it buys you goodwill with subscribers so that when there is a big sale, whether that's Black Friday, a new product release, and they're, you're, they're getting hammered with the emails, come buy this, you know, one day left. They're remembering that... You provided a lot of value. You gave them a lot of free stuff, free content. And so it buys you that goodwill. So they're like, OK, I'm going to stay motivated to be on this list. And I'm not going to go and subscribe because I know that the value they provide is, is worth staying on here for. Um, so yeah, we'll quickly go through uh, platforms and tools. Um, do we, we want to just let, open it up for questions? Yeah, let's do questions. Platforms and tools, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, he's asking what platforms that we use. So um, I use MailChimp. I've used MailChimp from the beginning, and uh, it is. I'm yeah, I'm using the paid version of MailChimp. Um, I'm on the paid version for two reasons: one, the automation you have to pay for, and then two, uh, the size of your list, so you only get a certain amount. 
Yeah, 2000. So, so I use MailChimp, and I've been able to do everything that I've ever wanted to do with MailChimp. Some people are like, oh, MailChimp's for beginners. You can't do all the automation sequencing and stuff, but you absolutely can. You can integrate it with your e-commerce website. Um, we, we started with MailChimp also because it was free, the free version, and that's what we recommend to everyone until you get your first 2,000 subscribers. And honestly, now MailChimp is, it, they're a player. You know, when our email list got past 2,000, they didn't have all of the features that GetResponse and ConvertKit and some of these other ones had. They do have them now. And we use GetResponse, we love it. But the, any of these will work. I know the owner of ConvertKit, the people who put out that product, they've got a great product. You know, they all are very similar to what they do. Um, and even MailChimp now, and we're going to probably be moving back to MailChimp after all this time because for our subscribers, we're going to have a course, <laughs> and that's where most of them are on, and so we're going to uh, do the email marketing. Any of your offers, like where you recommend something you're using and where you get a commission like an affiliate? Affiliate, yeah. I mean, we haven't focused that much on affiliate stuff. We're probably the two knuckleheads in the room. Um, I, I thought it was a bad thing at first. You know, I thought, oh, affiliate, it's going to, I don't want my content to be tainted. You know, I don't want people to think that we're giving them free stuff so that we can make money on that way, <laughs> even though I'm giving them free stuff to make money this other way, uh, which is by sending them emails. Um, but I've since changed that greatly. I think people, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, All right. we do it now, just not as much. This gentleman had a question here. Uh, yeah, what about constant contact? Uh, um, he's asking about constant contact. Um, in my opinion, last time I checked, constant contact was very behind the times. Uh, it works great for simple newsletters, but for doing a lot of the, the automations and integrations, they haven't really kept up. I could be wrong, that, that might have changed within the last year or so, but um, last I checked, they were, I, I probably wouldn't recommend them. And I do want to say this, when you're, when you're looking into that stuff, the automation is very important, the sequencing. That's where a lot of the power is for your email marketing campaigns. Autoresponders. Oh, yeah, well, not just autoresponders, the segmenting and the sequencing. Um, yes? What's that URL you said? Um, or where do you get that? Oh, aspengrowthstudios.com. You can, when you go to download our slides and stuff, we'll put it. Remember, repeat the question. Oh, the question was where was the icons? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so she's asking um, MailChimp, a lot of times the emails, they're the HTML, really pretty looking emails using their email builder, opposed to some of the other platforms like GetResponse, they're more text only and kind of look like your, your buddy is sending it to you. So I've, I've tested both a little bit and for, for my audience, which is a lot of designers and stuff like that, they seem to respond better to the, the pretty HTML emails. However, there's one thing uh, to say about the text only. Um, Gmail has a tab called promotions and so a lot of times your emails get stuck in that promotions tab however there's some tricks you can do to, to help you stay out of the promotions tab and one of them is to do text only only have one link um, you can research in Google how to stay out of the promotions tab but um, that, that's another benefit is uh, not only does it feel like you're getting an email from your buddy but it also uh, stays out of the promotions tab yes question is, is with GDPR, uh, are we doing double opt-ins? Um, we have done double opt-ins since the beginning. Uh, and the reason why we do that is because I don't want somebody to throw some fake email address to get our free stuff. So you should always be doing double opt-ins, which will cover you with your GDPR stuff, I hope. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things uh, with the list building tools, Forminator, uh, Gravity Forms, Caldera, all of them do it, but where you control uh, basically what email they get. So after they respond, you can send them a notification saying, thanks for subscribing. Well, that's what I use to send the freebies. They, they subscribe uh, using the form, and then they get the, the download link uh, with the, the notification email, and then it integrates with MailChimp. And so that, uh, 
allows it to be GDPR friendly as well as accomplish our goals too. We got time for I think maybe one Wait, or two one more, more questions. Question, two more questions. Yes. Yeah, I think the question is, um, we focused a lot on the consumer holidays and stuff. Is there any reason why you would, I'm assuming, want to send out emails, promotional emails, other times of the year for business, for B2B type kind of things? Yeah, I mean, you have to go with whatever your industry is. Just because we, you know, adhere to um, those specific times to, you know, that are known to do promotions and stuff. I would say even if you're doing B2B, don't not do those things. You can have a Black Friday, Cyber Monday, your own promotion, B2B, hey, let's celebrate it. But definitely, if there's other times of the year that are more, uh, that are better for your niche or your industry, and it's known that, you know, new things come out, new tools come out that affect this industry or whatever, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and small business owners, they love to save money too. You're, you're right, like in like a, an enterprise level, you know, they're gonna be spending millions of dollars. They probably don't care about, you know, saving 200 bucks at Black Friday. Uh, but for small business owners that are buying our products uh, that are building websites for a living, um, they, they love the, the Black Friday savings. Are we done? We're done. Zero? We're done, all right. Zero time, thank you all. <laughs>